Okay, everybody, we are going to do Luke chapter 21. And he looked and saw the rich putting their gifts into the treasury. And he also saw a certain poor widow putting in two mites. A certain poor widow putting in two mites. So he said, Truly I say to you that this poor widow has put in more than all. For all these things out of their abundance have put in offerings for Father Jehovah, but she out of her poverty put in all the livelihood that she had. Then as some then as some spoke of the temple, how it was adorned with beautiful stones and donations, he said, These things which you see, the days will come, in which not one stone shall be left upon another that shall not be thrown down. And of course, Jesus is talking about the destruction of uh, Jerusalem in 70 AD uh, because the people rejected Jesus, you know, as being the image of Father Jehovah, God incarnate. So they asked him, saying, Teacher, but when will these things be? And what sign will there be when these things are about to take place? And Jesus said, and Jesus said, Take heed that you not be deceived, for many will come in my name, saying, I am he, and the time has drawn near, therefore do not go after them. But when you hear of wars and commotions, do not be terrified, for these things must come to pass, but the end will not come immediately. Then he said to them, Nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. And there will be great earthquakes in various places, and famines and pestilences, and there will be fearful signs and great signs, fearful sights and great signs from heaven. But before all these things, they will lay their hands on you and persecute you, delivering you up to the synagogues and prisons. You will be brought before kings and rulers for my name's sake, for Jesus' name, uh, in Jesus' name. But it will turn out for you as, a, as an occasion for testimony. Therefore, settle it in your hearts not to meditate beforehand on what you will answer. For I will give you a mouth and wisdom, which all your adversaries will not be able to contradict or resist. Of course, that's because of receiving the Holy Spirit through Jesus. You all know what to say um, through the Holy Spirit. Um, you will be betrayed even by parents and brothers, relatives and friends, and they will put some of you to death. And you will be hated by all for my name's sake. Jesus. Jesus was Jesus. But not a hair of your head shall be lost. By your patience, possesses, possess your souls. <clears throat> um, souls. Compare psychology, psychosis, psychiatrist, psychedelic, souk, which is the word for soul. Is the soul as distinguished from the body? It is the seat of the affections, will, desire, emotions, mind, reasoning, and understanding. Souk is the inner self or the essence of life. The word often denotes person or self. Souk is not dissolved by death. Body and spirit may be separated, but spirit and soul can be can only be distinguished. Um, <clears throat> and um, spirit is uh, us having uh, accepted Jesus, you know, and everything. That's how we are truly alive, you know, by accepting Jesus. You know, our, our innermost being will be alive and continue to live with Jesus. But when you see, uh, with Jesus, but when you see Jerusalem surrounded by armies, then know that its desolation is near. Then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. Let those who are in the midst of her depart. Let not those who are in the country enter her. For these are the days of vengeance, that all things which are written may be fulfilled. But woe to those who are pregnant, 
and to those who are nursing babies in those days, for there will be great distress in the land and wrath upon the people, and they will fall by the edge of the sword and be led away captive into all nations, and Jerusalem will be trampled by Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles are fulfilled. <clears throat> um, the times of the Gentiles refers to the interval between the destruction of Jerusalem, A.D. 70, and the second coming of Jesus, which during which the gospel is proclaimed to the whole world, inasmuch as Jerusalem often symbolizes the Jewish people as a whole. Revelation 11.2 uh, Jesus here is also prophesying the disbelief of the majority of Jews during um, the church age, the Christian, you know, um, from the time Jesus, you know, um, died, resurrected, and ascended into heaven, uh, basically the present time. <clears throat> until seems to allude to a repentance Israel welcoming uh, Jesus's return when Jesus returns. From the time Jesus, you know, uh, died, resurrected, and ascended into heaven uh, to the present time and until Jesus returns, uh, that is um, the time of the Gentiles. Um, and we're going to go to 20, verse 25 now. And there will be signs in the sun and the moon and then the stars and on the earth distress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring, men's hearts failing them from fear and the expectation of those things which are coming on earth for the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Jesus, Jesus return. Jesus' return. Jesus' return. Jesus' return. Now when these things begin to happen, look up and lift your heads because your redemption draws near. Then he spoke to them a parable. Look at the fig tree and all the trees. When they are already budding, you see and know for yourselves that summer is now near. So you also, when you see these things happening, know that the kingdom of Father Jehovah is near. Assuredly, I say to you, this generation will by no means pass away till all things take place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will by no means pass away. Um, and the notations on this um, are Matthew 24. And let me go back to Matthew 24. Matthew 24, 30. Jesus and Jesus. Um, the, as the budding of trees signifies the coming summer, the signs described by Jesus will give warning of his coming. Even the present generation would witness the destruction of Jerusalem, which was a type of events connected with Jesus' return. Um, we are living in the end times and have been since Jesus ascended into heaven after his resurrection. And it's been counting down to Jesus' return ever since. Jesus' return ever since. Jesus' return ever since. Um, but take heed to yourselves, lest your hearts be weighed down with carousing, drunkenness, and cares of this life, and that day come on you unexpectedly, for it will come as a snare on all those who dwell upon the face of the earth, of the whole earth, who dwell on the face of the whole earth. Watch, therefore, and pray, uh, Father Jehovah, Lord Jesus Christ, Lord Jesus Christ of the Holy Spirit, always, that you may be counted worthy to escape all these things that will come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. Because Jesus is coming back as, uh, you know, as a supreme judge of the entire universe, you know, as God incarnate on his second coming. And in the daytime he was teaching in the temple, but at night he went out and stayed on the mountain called Olivet, the Mount of Olives. Then early in the morning all the people came to him in the temple to hear him. Um, now we're going into chapter 22. Now the Feast of Unleavened Bread drew near, which is called Passover. And the chief priests and the scribes saw how they might kill him, for they feared the people. 
Then that bastard Satan entered Judas, surnamed Iscariot, who was numbered among the twelve. So he went his way and confirmed, conferred with the chief priests and captains how he might betray Jesus to them. And they were glad and agreed to give him money. So he promised and sought opportunity to betray Jesus to them in the absence of the multitude. Then the day, then came the day of unleavened bread when the Passover must be killed. Um, and Jesus sent Peter and John, and Jesus sent Peter and John saying, go and prepare the Passover for us that we may eat. So they said to him, where do you want us to prepare? And he said to them, behold, when you have entered the city, a man will meet you carrying a pitcher of water. Follow him into the house which he enters. Then you shall say to the master, master of the house the teacher says to you where is the guest room where i may eat the passover with my disciples then he will show you a large furnished upper room there make ready so they went and found it just as jesus said to them as jesus said to them they prepared the passover when the hour had come he sat down and the twelve apostles with him then he said to them with fervent desire, I have desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I say to you, I will no longer eat, eat of it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of Father Jehovah. That Father Jehovah. Then he took the cup and gave thanks and said, Take this, gave thanks to Father Jehovah and said, Take this and divide it among yourselves. For I say to you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of Father Jehovah comes. And he took bread, gave thanks, and broke it, and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, he took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you. But behold, the hand of my betrayer is with me on the table. And truly, the Son of Man goes as it has been term determined, but woe to that man by whom he is betrayed. Then they began to question among themselves which of them it was who would do this thing. Um, uh, let me see if there's any notations on this. There is notations for it in Matthew 26. Um, Matthew, uh, Jesus, Jesus, Matthew 26, um, Verse 20. Um, and I'm going to stop right there at this moment in time um, to continue later on. Uh, Jesus bless you all. I'll talk to you all later. Uh, Jesus bless you all. Jesus bless you all. Amen.